6.1, our objective this time is to evaluate nth roots and use rational exponents. What that means is, in the past we've evaluated square roots. Today we're going to learn how to evaluate cube roots, fourth roots, etc. And all that means is, instead of asking yourself, what do we square to get a number, a cube root, we would ask, what do we cube to get a number? And so on. So we still do factor trees. On a cube root, we'll look for sets of three. On a fourth root, we'll look for sets of four, and so on. Of course, on a square root, we look for sets of two. One thing worth pointing out, we are allowed to take a odd-powered root of a negative number. We are not allowed to take an odd, an even powered root of a negative number. We saw that with square roots and got imaginary numbers. With other even roots, we're not going to even worry about it. So we won't take a fourth root of a negative number or a sixth root of a negative number. If we have a positive number, we get two answers, the positive and the negative. For instance, if I want the fourth root 16, I could say that the answer is 2 or negative 2. And the way that looks using numbers, I would say something like the fourth root, like this, equals plus or minus the fourth root of 16 equals 2. So we'll see this in a couple of examples right away. It says find the indicated roots of A. It says n is 3. That means we are allowed to have a negative number that we take the root of. We're going to want the third root of negative 216. And if you do your factor tree, you'll figure out what that is. Go ahead and pause the video. Try to find that factor tree yourself. Remember, you're looking for sets of 3. Looks like we have two sets of 3. We have three twos. And we have three threes. Nothing left on the inside. We do want to make sure we have our negative sign since we're taking the cube root of a negative. Other than that, we're done. Go ahead and try your factor tree for 81. Also, the one hint I'll give is because it's an even powered root, we're going to put plus or minus in front. And you look for sets of four this time. Then pause the video and try that on your own. Looks like we do have a set of four. We have four threes. We have nothing left over. And we don't forget our plus or minus. And that's it. Next up tells us how to rewrite a fractional exponent. So in other words, if I see something like 16 to the 3 halves power, the way you always want to rewrite that to try to simplify it is first rewrite it as... 16 to the 1 half to the third. We want that numerator to be 1. That way this is a fancy way of just saying the square root of 16. If it would have been to the 1 third, that would be the cube root of 16, and so on. The reason it's nice to write this as so, we know what the square root of 16 is. It's 4. Then we can evaluate 4 to the third without too much difficulty. For a negative fraction exponent, you just put 1 over that first, as you see in the second formula. But that's nothing new. So let's take a look at these. We'll do one together, then I'll have you try one on your own. Start with B, since it's a little harder. It says 32 to the negative 3 fifths. First step I would do when I'm trying to simplify this is rewrite this as 32 to the 1 fifth the negative third. The reason I want to do that, I want that number to be 1. Next, I can say, okay, 32 to the 1 fifth means the fifth root of 32. And it just so happens that 32 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, five times. So the fifth root of 32 is 2. From here, we can use our properties of exponents to finish up. 
try going through a similar process on part A. Pause the video, see if we match up our results. Turns out that's the exact example I made up on the previous page. That was not on purpose. But you should have got 64. Next up, just some keystrokes to help you see how to type these types of exponents into your calculator. Try these on your own. Make sure you get the same numbers that you see on the right. If not, you're typing into your calculator incorrectly. At this point, you can pause the video and try some of these on your own, or you can do that later. Time to solve some equations. Looking at part A, your first instinct might be to divide both sides by 4. It's an old skill, and you'd be right. Now we're going to talk about how to get rid of a 5. We don't have a fifth root button on our calculator. We have a square root button and maybe a cube root button, but not a fifth root. So the way we're going to handle this is we're going to raise both sides to the one-fifth power. Why? Because 5 times one-fifth is 1. So all that's left is figuring out the fifth root of 32. Now, if you're in a calculator, you could just type 32 to the one-fifth. If I expect no decimal answers, you should do a factor tree. Turns out you get a nice number for this one. So either way, you'd get 2. Verify that on your own. Next up, we see this four, x minus 3 to the 4th power equals 21. We can't add 3 to both sides first because that minus 3 is inside the parentheses. Instead, we can raise the whole thing to the 1 fourth power. And we have to remember that 1 fourth power really means the 4th root of 21. Except since it's an odd, since it's an even power, we have to say plus or minus. Now we can add 3 to both sides. And we're done. You could also try to make a factor tree for 21, but you'll notice it doesn't get you very far. You could also try to get a decimal answer using a calculator. You should get 7.6 and negative 1.6. In general, I think I'd prefer that you do it without the calculator, because most of the time you're going to see your answers on a multiple choice test that don't have decimals. You'd have the 4 through to 21 in your answer. For our last problem, go ahead and pause the video, read this, see if you can set it up. If you wrote something like this, good job. All that's left now is solving for L. You should be able to try that on your own. We'll give a little hint. You're going to divide both sides by something, and then you're going to raise both sides to the one-third power. Let's try that on your own. We end up with a coral cod that has a length of 22.9 centimeters. There's a couple reasons we don't say plus or minus. One, because the power was, because we're raising to the one-third power, it's an odd power root. We only get the one answer. Even if it was an even-powered root, you wouldn't want a negative length for your answer. Wouldn't make sense in the context. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do that later. Otherwise, we are done with this lesson.